Assalamu alaikum dear viewers and welcome back to a brand new episode of Roundup. I'm your host Khani and unfortunately Nasser can't join us today. I'm excited to bring you up to date. As usual, this week's Roundup will take us to different places around the world as we cover a variety of topics. So, Jazakallah for tuning in and let's get started. As usual, let's begin with some headlines from this week. Kylian Mbappe has told Paris Saint-Germain he will leave the league when champions win his contract ends next year. The French international will not trigger a one-year extension option and could even be sold this summer as PSG will seek to prevent him from leaving for free, according to the local reports. White rhinos were reintroduced into the Garamba National Park in the Democratic Republic of Congo on Friday, nearly 16 years after the last one was poached in the area. Conservationists said that this effort would restore the ecological balance in one of Africa's oldest national parks through the reintroduction of the southern white rhino. Argentina is battling an economic crisis with inflation estimated to hit around 150% by the end of the year, leaving some 4 in every 10 people mired in poverty. Robledo said the soup kitchen she works at can't keep up with the demand. The Sea of Mirrors digital exhibition immerses Rio de Janeiro's residents in the beauty of nature and the universe through mirrors. Using digital technology projected on panoramic screens and mirrors, the exhibition pays homage to nature by showing some wonders of the sea, such as fish, jellyfish, corals, and others such as the Milky Way glaciers and sunsets. Jazakallah for that. Recently, temperatures have been soaring in the United Kingdom. In fact, we have been experiencing an intense heat wave. Now, staying cool in the heat is incredibly important, and especially staying safe out in the sun. So, let's check out this report to learn about some precautions we can take to ensure that we protect ourselves as much as possible. Assalamualaikum. With the weather warming up, many of us are finally enjoying the summer fun. My name is Leila Sethi. And I am Zakaria Sethi. And today, we will be shedding some light on why it is so important to protect ourselves from the sun in warm weather. Ah, oh, the sun. The ultimate source of warmth, light and vitamin D. It is the largest and most powerful object in our solar system, providing us with light, heat and energy. The sun itself is really hot, 5,505 degrees Celsius to be exact. But did you also know that it is a powerhouse of ultraviolet radiations? Yep. Those sunbeams carry invisible rays that can cause some serious damage to our skin. Overexposure to the sun can lead to sunburn, which is not only painful, but also causes skin damage. The intensity of the sun rays changes during the day. Ever heard of the UV index? It's like a weather forecast for UV radiation. When the UV index is high, it means the sun is cranking up the intensity. So, be sure to check the UV index in your area to plan your sun safe activities accordingly. Now, there's no reason to worry too much. These dangers do not mean we just have to hide away indoors. It means that we have to soak up the sun responsibly. Let's learn some sun safety tips so we can enjoy the warm weather in a healthy way. Tip number one, time it right. When the sun is at its peak, usually between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., its rays are at their strongest. Try to limit your sun exposure during these hours. Tip number two, slather on that sunscreen. It is like a superhero shield for your skin. Choose one that's SPF 30 or higher. And don't forget your face, neck, arms, ears, and feet. Tip number three. 
accessorize for safety. Hats provide shade for your face, while sunglasses protect your eyes from harmful rays. Armed with these sun safety tips and some fun facts about the sun's intensity, you're now ready to seize the day while keeping your skin healthy and happy. Remember, it's all about having a balance between enjoying the sun and protecting yourself from its powerful rays. Stay safe. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum. Sakala for that. Staying safe and protecting ourselves is so necessary. I hope you found those tips very helpful. Moving on, every week we are so blessed as Ahmadi Muslims to be able to hear from our beloved Azur, Ayad al-Tala bin Aziz, during the weekly Friday sermon. Here's a short summary recap of this week's address from Mubarak Mosque in Islamabad. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. During this week's Friday sermon, Hazur Ayat Allah Ta'ala bin Asul Aziz spoke about the life of the Holy Prophet and the early trips before the Battle of Badr. Did you know the Battle of Badr took place in the small town of Badr? The location is 130 kilometers from the city of Medina and it is 355 kilometers from Mecca. Beloved Hazur Ayat Allah Ta'ala bin Asul Aziz began his sermon by saying that he would continue mentioning the preparations for the battle with the disbelievers of Mecca. Hazur then mentioned the prophecy of Umayyah bin Khalid. Hazur Ayat Allah bin Aslizi said that there was a man named Umayyah bin Khalid who didn't want to go to battle with the people from the city of Mecca. One day, a leader named Abu Jahl went to Umayyah and told him that if he stayed back, others might also refuse to go. Abu Jahl thought Umayyah was an important and respected person, so his absence would have had a bad influence on the others. However, the real reason Umayyah didn't want to go was because of the Holy Prophet who had told him that he would be killed in the battle. Umayyah was scared and didn't want to face that danger. There is another story that says, Hazrat Zara told Umayyah that he had heard the Holy Prophet say that Umayyah would be killed. Umayyah was surprised and said that the Holy Prophet never tells lies. So, because of this prophecy, Umayyah was afraid to go to battle. Abu Jahl managed to convince Umayyah to at least travel with the caravan for two days. Umayyah agreed, thinking he would be safe during that time. But, unfortunately, it was during those very two days that Umayyah was killed, just as the Holy Prophet had foretold. Beloved Azul said that the Muslim army led by the Holy Prophet was not very big, and they didn't have many horses. Some narrations say that they only had five horses, while others say they just had two. They also had only 60 sets of armor and around 70 to 80 camels that they would take turns riding. When it was the Holy Prophet turn to walk, his companions asked him to ride on the camel while they walked. But the Holy Prophet said that they too were all equal, and he too would experience the blessings of walking. So he chose to walk alongside his companions instead of riding. Hazur Ayat Allah Ta'ala bin Aslazi said that during this journey, the Holy Prophet prayed for his companions. O oh Allah, they are barefoot. Grant them riding animals. They are unclothed. Grant them clothes. They are hungry. Satiate them. They are straitened circumstances. Grant them wealth by your grace. This prayer was certainly answered because on the way back from the Battle of Badr, there was no one who wanted a riding animal and, and didn't get one or even more. Similarly, those without clothes found clothes. There was no shortage of food and every household came into wealth. During this week's sermon, Bilafat Azur Ayatollah bin Asilazi said that before the battle, some people wanted to get their riding camels from outside the city, but they were not allowed to do so. They had to either stay behind or walk on foot. There were others who were given permission to stay back for valid reasons. For example, a companion named Hazrat Abu Umarna, Rezila Anho, wanted to go to battle. But the Holy Prophet told him to stay and take care of his sick mother. Sadly, when the Holy Prophet ﷺ returned, Abu Umama's mother had passed away, 
and he prayed at her grave. Dear brothers and sisters, this was just a very brief summary of this week's Friday sermon. We hope you are able to hear the full sermon which can be found on mta.tv. Until next time, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Jazakallah for this week's summary. Now on Roundup, we don't just bring you the news. We also have reporters from around the world who take us along and show us some marvellous sights and scenes from around the world. Now let's hop over to Bangladesh and check out some beautiful scenes from their National Botanical Garden in Dhaka. Let's check it out. Bangladesh, a country rich in culture, tradition and biodiversity. Today we take you on a journey to the heart of the country's capital Dhaka where we explore the National Botanical Garden a unique treasure of natural beauty. The National Botanical Garden is spread over 208 acres and boasts a stunning collection of native and exotic plants, including over 1,500 species of trees, shrubs, and flowers. The garden was established in 1963 with the aim of preserving and showcasing the country's diverse flora and fauna. It has since become a popular destination for both tourists and locals, attracting over 2 million visitors every year. The garden serves as an educational resource, providing a hands-on learning experience for students of all ages. The garden has a dedicated conservation program for endangered plant species which includes research, seed banks, and propagation of rare and endangered plants. The garden also has a vast collection of tropical plants, including orchid, bromelias, and palm. The garden also has several water bodies, including ponds, lakes, and streams, which are home to various aquatic plants and animals. Some of these plants are rarely found outside their natural habitats, making the garden an important center for the conservation of tropical plant species. The National Botanical Garden is not just a collection of plants and animals. It's a place of beauty and tranquility. The garden is a perfect escape from the hustle and bustle of city life, a place to connect with nature and appreciate its beauty. The National Botanical Garden is a gem in the heart of Bangladesh a place to explore the country's natural beauty, learn about its biodiversity, and appreciate the importance of conservation. Jazakallah for that beautiful report. That was amazing to see. Now we are going to be heading to another country in Asia and learning about some exquisite creatures made by Allah. They are known as birds of paradise. Wonder what they are? Let's find out. Seperti yang kita ketahui bersama, Indonesia punya alam yang indah. Pemberian dari Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Bahkan enggak sedikit loh yang bilang keindahan Indonesia bagaikan surga. Makanya enggak heran kalau Indonesia juga dihuni sama hewan-hewan dari surga. Hmm, memangnya ada ya? Ada dong. Yuk kita kenalan sama burung dari surga, namanya burung cendrawasih. Cendrawasih adalah jenis burung pengicau yang bisa kita temukan di Papua dan beberapa pulau kecil di sekitarnya. Ada sekitar 30 jenis cendrawasih yang terdapat di Indonesia. Dari yang ukurannya sebesar burung gagak seperti cendrawasih paradigala sampai yang mungil seperti cendrawasih raja. Cendrawasi juga terkenal dengan kecantikannya karena memiliki bulu yang beragam warna dan motif. Makanya nggak heran kalau cendrawasi dijuluki sebagai Bird of Paradise atau burung surga. Julukan tersebut diberikan oleh seorang bangsawan Eropa dari abad ke-16 sewaktu melihat keindahan burung cendrawasi. 
Sayangnya, karena kecantikan bulunya, cenderawasih banyak diburu untuk dijadikan peliharaan, pajangan, bahkan aksesoris. Alhasil, sekarang cenderawasih menjadi hewan langka yang dilindungi undang-undang. Jumlah mereka di alam Papua saat ini hanya sekitar 2-3 ekor per kilometer persegi. Duh, sayang banget ya. Makanya kita harus ngelindungi dan ngejaga burung cenderawasih biar nggak punah. Biar kita bisa terus menikmati kecantikannya burung cenderawasih. Setuju nggak teman-teman? Oh iya, cenderawasih punya cara yang unik loh dalam mencari pasangan. Cenderawasih jantan biasanya akan membersihkan lingkungan sekitar sarang mereka... Supaya cenderawasih betina senang datang ke tempatnya. Lalu cenderawasih jantan juga akan memamerkan bulu-bulu mereka yang cerah dan melakukan gerakan tarian yang unik. Wah, lucu banget ya tingkah mereka. Teman-teman, itu dia sekilas penjelasan dari burung cenderawasih. Kalau kalian nanti ke Indonesia, semoga bisa melihat keindahannya ya. Amin. Tazakla, aren't they just marvelous? You know, Allah has put so much beauty in this world. And we're so glad to our hardworking reporters from around the world who bring such unique reports to our global viewers. Now we'll be checking out some sights and scenes from an exciting event which recently took place here at Betelfdu Mosque in London. Let's check it out. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the grand celebration of Africa Day. Hosted by Pan-African Ahmadiyya Muslim Women's Association, PAMA. Before we delve into the highlights of this momentous event, let's take a moment to learn about PAMA's mission and vision. PAMA UK was established by Allah's grace, by our Caliphate Masi the fourth, and it's for the purpose of bringing Amadis of African um, origin together to the mainstream of the Jamaat. And by the grace of Allah and guidance of the Zul, we've been trying to do so. Today's event here at Bethel Fadul Mosque is also to commemorate 100 years of the establishment of Lajna Imala. For today's um, program, our reflection is to look at the exemplary of the 14 founding members, pioneers of Lajina Imala, the record they have created, the history we have made, and see what history and good record we can equally make for the younger generation. The event showcased many examples of African art and culture. But what is Africa Day? Maria Mensah explained. The reason why Africa Day is so important is that it's given us the opportunity to get to know each other, to get to understand each other's cultures, each other's idiosyncrasies, get to taste for each other's food, be able to celebrate our sisters, celebrate the unique cultures that we have, the unique languages, the unique people. Everybody brings their own energy, their own history and their own passion for Ahmadiyyat. I'm loving this exhibition. It's all about the history, culture and achievements of Africa. A highlight of the event was a costume parade with Lajna women and children dressed in colours of their countries. Lajna members from Africa are famous for their melodious singing and there was lots of that. The attendees were treated to a range of dishes, typical African cuisine. I'm here at the food stall. Just look at all these dishes. A program like this brings us back to our roots and brings us brings us back to the forefront of faith and of love and sisterhood. And I think bringing the young people together to witness this is just amazing and a very spiritual experience for all involved. Well, today has been amazing. I have learned a lot about African culture, and it's been really fun. Zakala. Happy African Day! Just for that report. It seems like everyone had a great time and attendees truly got a chance to experience a rich and vibrant culture environment. But that's it for today's episode. We hope you thoroughly enjoyed it and we'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback at roundupmta.tv.
Send us a message with what you like the most in today's episode and join us again next week for our final episode of season two. Until next time, take care and assalamu alaikum. Yeah.